Today on Film Learning, we take on the Flash logo in 3D! Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And as I said roughly two seconds ago, today is uncharted territory as we venture into 3D. I am of course talking about Cinema 4D, and in the case of you guys with After Effects CC and not the full Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite. So why are we doing this? Well, it's all thanks to this request. Barry Allen asked, can you do a tutorial about the new Flash intro? Please? I sure can, Barry. Wait, Barry, Allen, The Flash. Barry Allen's The Flash! <laughs> anyway, in order to complete this effect, all you have to do is download the zip file in the description and you're good to go. Now let's get to work. Okay gang, here we are in After Effects. Now I know that sounds strange considering I said this was about Cinema 4D, but just bear with me and I'll explain. We're actually going to be using both After Effects and Cinema 4D at the same time, much like you would when you use Dynamic Link in a video clip in Premiere Pro and then add effects to it in After Effects. Basically, by having the project open in both apps, we'll be able to see a live update of any changes we make as we go along. So our first step is to import our Flash logo Cinema 4D file, like so. In case you didn't know, you can natively import Cinema 4D files straight into After Effects CC, which is majorly cool. But as you can see, our file looks pretty bare at the moment, so let's change that by selecting the file, heading up to Edit, and click Edit Original. This will open Cinema 4D, and here's what we're working with. If I click and hold the Orbit tool, that's this one right here, we can see that we have the outline of a lightning bolt that I've drawn as a spline. Now I won't cover drawing splines today because that's a whole different tutorial. But one thing that's obvious is, it's not solid, and it's not 3D. Yet. To make it 3D, let's head up here to the NURBS menu, we'll click the drop down arrow, and the one we want to select is Extrude NURBS. That places it here in the object window, which is a bit like the project menu in After Effects. We'll then grab our bolt and drop it straight on in, and BAM! Instant 3D bolt, baby! Pretty sweet, huh? Now before we move to the next step, I just want to adjust the depth of our extrusion to make it a little deeper. So let's click on our NURBS object, head down to settings, and let's bump that end value that's currently 20 to about 50. As you can see, it's a lot thicker now. We'll also open up the cap settings here and change it from cap to fillet cap. And we now have a bolt that has sort of a sweet carved edge. Our next step is to build the disc part of our logo. To do this, let's head up to our shapes menu right here, hit the drop down arrow and select cylinder. Time to change some settings. Let's head down to the cylinder's object settings, set the radius to 185, the height to 50, and the rotation segments to 100. We'll then head down to the rotation settings here, and then type 90 in the p-axis, and that'll flip our cylinder the way we want it. Now, time to move it into place. Firstly, let's head up here and click this button. This will give us a multi-view perspective. We can then select the front menu and begin moving our object using the position controls so it looks centered, like so. Let's then click that multi-view button again, and this time we'll select the top view and let's push our cylinder back a touch so that our lightning bolt is poking out the front. That looks pretty good. We'll then hit the view button again and change back to our original perspective view. If we head up to our render settings, that's this button here, head to effect, select ambient occlusion from the drop down menu and then hit the test render button, this one here, you can now see our logo is starting to take shape. Now guys, I got you to turn on ambient occlusion for one reason. We currently don't have any lights in the scene and turning that on creates some shadowing and allows us to see our logo as it's supposed to look. Plus I think we can all agree, it looks way better now. Okay, our last step, that's right, I said last step in building our logo is to build the outer rim. So let's do that, shall we? Let's head up to the shape menu again, only this time we're gonna grab a tube. First off, let's flip it the right way up by adding 90 to our P-axis. From there, head over to those object settings and we'll give this bad boy an inner radius of 180, leave the outer radius at 200, the rotation segments to 100, and let's change that height to 70. Next, and just like last time, let's hit the view button and let's move it into place using the front view, once you're happy, we'll switch to the top view and position this one so that it sits behind the bolt but in front of our original cylinder, much like, say, a cap would. 
Now let's switch back to perspective and check out a preview. It's looking nice, and guess what? If this is your first time in cinema, congratulations. You've just built your first model. Pretty awesome, eh? Now before we continue, let's change the render settings to something a little more preferable. Let's head up and click the settings button, and if we click output, you can see that our comp is currently set to 800 by 600. We don't want that. So let's click this play button here, scroll down to film and video, and then we want to select HDTV 1080p 24. As you can see, it now changes our comp to full HD and 24 frames per second. Let's now close that menu and save our project wherever you like. Now, if we head back to After Effects and proceed to drop that Cinema 4D file in a brand new comp, it now shows our logo updated in all its glory. If we jump into the Cineware settings and change the renderer to standard final, you can see a real-time render of your work. And if we head up to layer and add a new camera, like so, and then set the camera in Cineware to centered comp camera, we can even move around the logo from within After Effects. Now that is really cool. Now you can see you have to sort of rejigger the camera to put it back into place, but it's not that big a deal. But enough of that, we have a logo to finish, so let's head back to cinema and do just that. Firstly, let's add some materials to our logo. Now this is really easy, since I've taken the liberty of making them for you. So let's click and hold the mouse on our gold texture, and then drop it on our bolt, and then on our outer ring. We'll then follow that up and drop our white glow texture on our cylinder. Done! But, since our material has a glow, we have to turn that on in the render settings. So let's click up to our render settings once more, click that drop down menu, select object glow, and now let's check out a preview. It's getting there. Now that our materials are on, let's add some lights to the scene. To do that, head up here to this little light bulb and just click it. We'll then use the position controls to move this one so it sits just to the left side and above our logo, around here. Now guys, feel free to use the other views to get this light exactly where you want it. We'll then head down here to our shadow maps option and select soft shadows. If we check out a preview, it's starting to look really cool. Let's then follow that light up with another one down the bottom, around to the left just like our last one, around here is pretty good, and then we'll add one more light, only this time we'll add it to the right side and then push it back a little bit, just to fill in that dead space a little. Feel free to play around with these lights until you find the right look for your shot too. Once you're happy, we'll move on to the final step. So our next step is to give our logo something to reflect. So let's head up to this menu and grab a sky. It's this one here, you know, the one that says sky. Let's then head down to the material menu here, double click and that'll create us a new material. We'll then proceed to double click on that material to open up its options. We then wanna head down to the luminance channel here. We'll turn that on, click this button, and then we're going to import the image from the download pack. Now for me personally, I don't want it to reflect, you know, too detailed. So what I'm gonna do is change the blur offset here to 5%, just to blur it out just a touch. If we close that out, drag and drop that material on top of our sky, and do a test render, you can see now we've got a subtle reflection going on on the edges here. It just gives our 3D model a little bit more depth. Alrighty, one last step. Now we want that reflection, but we don't want to see that sky show up when we head back to After Effects. So we'll simply select our sky, head up here to Tags, Cinema 4D Tags, click Compositing, and then we want to check Compositing Background, and uncheck Scene by Camera. That way, we'll get the reflection, but our sky will be invisible. Now let's finally hit Save, and head back to After Effects. Right, now that we're back in After Effects, our comp is updated, and you can now animate your camera to do whatever you want. Let's hit P, hit the stopwatch on position, and then we'll grab the camera orbit tool, this little camera one right here, head to the end of the comp, and just move it a little. Now guys, you really want to animate your camera before you do any of the materials and whatnot. I've done it this way just to show you that it can be done live. But as you can see, it's really slow, so do it beforehand. I've also added a background comp to the project file that you can drop in as well. And if we check out a preview, that's another shot done. I'll cover adding the 3D text in a short episode in a few days, as this episode's getting a little long. Add up all of those steps and you get something like this. Previously on The Flash. So that's putting the Flash intro within Cinema 4D and After Effects. 
as you saw, it's a pretty easy process if you have After Effects CC, but if you don't and you've still just got the standalone version of Cinema 4D, you can easily replicate what we've done here today. And on top of all of that, it's not hard and it looks really cool. But that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, give that subscribe button a high five. You can also hit me up high by joining me on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Sam and Lee from Shock Bolt Studios. And exactly. until next time, keep learning. Cut.